optimum welfare for an animal if these boxes are che checked and, um, and the animal's welfare is met will result in optimum performance. And if th the converse is true, that animals that do not have good welfare cannot and will not perform well, even with various enhancers and things that have been used in the past. Um, so, so poor welfare systems will definitely result in poor performance. Welcome everyone, uh, this is Accelerate. My name is Nikolai Shitikin and I have Jim Johnson with me as a co-host and we continue talking to Barry Fleming today as our guest. Hello gents. Hi Nick, Hi, how there, you doing? Nikolai. So hey Barry, it's uh, really good to have you back on, the, uh, on today's show and um, today we want to talk a little bit more about a very important subject, a uh, subject people talk all over the world about as far as uh, livestock is concerned, it's, it's welfare. And so we want to talk about measuring and improving animal welfare with you today. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good subject and a very emotional subject, as you know, Jim and Nikolai. Um, it, it's, it's a great and challenging question. What is animal welfare? Um, and, and one thing that a lot of people forget about is having to look at it from the perspective of a chicken. Um, because we, we really need to think about what that chicken actually wants and needs versus an kind of anthropomorphic approach, uh, an approach where uh, people bestow human characteristics upon the chicken um, because a lot of welfare nowadays is driven by what the majority of consumers think what the chicken needs based on their own perception and thoughts. Um, one example that springs to mind is, is the focus of letting chickens roam free in a field with the big focus on um, free range eggs, for example. Um, this can be incredibly stressful to a chicken uh, because the chicken, if we look at it, originates from the jungle as a jungle fowl um, and it's, it's used to a jungle climate. And, and then suddenly what we're doing is we technically throw them into an open field. And I know that things have moved on a lot from that. But we, we throw them into this open field, potentially in a cold climate when they're used to this kind of jungle climate. Um, so, so therefore, it can be particularly stressful. On one side of the fence, the consumer thinks that that potentially is a good thing for the chicken. Um, but on the other side, from the chicken's perspective, that can be an absolute nightmare. Another yeah, example. That, uh -huh. Yeah, sorry, and I was just uh, wanted to ask you because uh, you know what, what you what you're telling right now, like you said, from the consumer perspective, it can be a little bit controversial. But from the nature perspective, it's uh, it's not what the right thing to do or might be, right? And there are different types of um, like saying like what what is welfare? So if you can just roll back a little bit and tell us what is welfare? Uh, yeah. And then we can yep. continue with this, yeah? Yeah, no problem at all. So, so I mean, welfare, when it really cr tried to crystallize it out, is defined as the five freedoms, which was initially um, developed within the United Kingdom following a 1965 um, report by the government, uh, which was ultimately labeled the Bramble Report. Um, he, here it was defined by Bramble's five freedoms. So, so they looked at five freedoms that would define good welfare for, for a farmed animal. Um, and, and the freedoms were to, that the animal should be able to get up, it should be able to turn around, it should be able to groom, it should be able to lie down, and it should be able to stretch its limbs, um, be it wings, be it legs. Um, so, so that was the kind of first crystallization that we had trying to define in human terms what would be good welfare for an animal. It's since been further expanded as time has progressed, and it was initially written into UK law because that's what I am most aware of in the 1970s. So, so it was one of the first countries in the world to really define and set up animal welfare standards. Um, ultimately, welfare from an animal's perspective can be measured by the level of performance achieved by that animal, be it a chicken, be it a cow, be it whatever, and, and, and the, the, the agricultural animals. Um, so put simply, optimum welfare for an animal, if these boxes are che checked and, um, and the animal's welfare is met, will result in optimum performance. And if 
the, the converse is true, that animals that do not have good welfare cannot and will not perform well, even with various enhancers and things that have been used in the past. Um, so, so poor welfare systems will definitely result in poor performance. And it's, I think it's also true for, for people, right? That uh, if you're happy, you can achieve more than if you're not happy. The same works for chicken. If they're happy, if the welfare is good, they will be able to perform better. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's never a true saying in that. Yeah, I like, I, like, I like this whole thing about, you know, it's not just you look at welfare in isolation. It's very much part of a modern husbandry approach. And in order to you know, get the best performance from the birds. But uh, the two kind of go hand in hand, um, uh, for me anyway. And and there's a lot, Barry, of, of different systems out there, but, you know, in terms of welfare approaches, free range, you've already mentioned, different caging systems, aviaries, um, floor, reared birds, etc. But what would you say the similar, similarities are between these different welfare approaches? I mean, as you say, Jim, I mean, there's a whole plethora of different systems there and they're all kind of gauged as, as moderate welfare, very high welfare systems, etc. And, and there are very, very common similarities between these different welfare systems currently, currently utilised around the world. And um, ultimately what they focus on is meeting or exceeding the requirements of the chickens so that they can exhibit their, their behavior, have free access to food, um, do their normal um, everyday events that they would get up and do. Um, for example, free range systems give the birds the opportunity to choose where they would be happiest. So if the weather's quite nice and there's decent cover, they'll go outside. If they feel threatened in any way, they will stay inside so they remain in cover. However, this can sometimes introduce further unwanted problems, such as disease or predation, which can be significant problems in these higher welfare systems. Um, and, and the irony is these were problems that were addressed or removed um, by what consumer views as lower welfare systems from the past um, and from the consumer's perspective. Um, and, and sometimes, ironically, looking at these systems, they did have some merits, um, not saying that any of them were perfect um, and we can always improve them, but but there was some merits there um, that, that would save some of the compromises that we make now. Right. And like we discussed on the previous uh, episode that lots of data is available at the farm, at the houses, um, they, it is used or not used by farmers and veterinarians, uh, but are there any ways that, for example, software companies can help using that data, try to understand what is best for chicken, try to understand how they feel uh, and what they talk about, because it would be ideal, right? If they would just tell us, okay, I'm, I'm feeling cold or I'm, I'm feeling hot. I feel dizzy or something, you know, because right now you need to, you need to guess or you need to have some side factors that you use. So if we can use the data, uh, what, what do you think it would be? How software can help? I mean, I mean, this is this is a great challenge, Nick, um, and 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 it's currently a pioneering and developing area for software companies um, to 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 increase and improve welfare for for the chickens. Um, th there there are many parameters that we can measure as as we've touched on in the previous podcast, um, but scoring certain behaviours such as gait, feeding, uh, frequency of feeding, mating behaviour, activity of the birds, the spread of the birds. Is there any playful um, behaviours which would show an ultimate level of happiness? Things like that um, will be great indicators if we can capture it, measure it, and, and then just map it out so that we can understand what, what the flocks are doing. By capturing this data, we can provide an arbitrary measure of welfare and show that it's actually good. So we can have even potentially a traffic light system um, like red it's, it's poor, something's compromised, actions required, yellow, there may be a problem, green, everything's hunky-dory and, and, and great. Um, so it will afford the opportunity for us to check and see if there's any environmental change um, that's having an impact to the birds, a change in feeding behaviour, stopping eating, feeder breakdown, etc. And, and all of this will add up and afford an opportunity for intervention um, in real time, in the real world. Um, and, and one of the areas that's developing that, that, that 
I think is particularly exciting is the opportunity for RFID technology to be utilised and monitor um, a whole host of parameters. And it can measure things like body temperature, movement, um, what the birds are doing, t- times of activity, um, where they are. Um, so so this it would be of immense value and higher value stock, uh, such as breeders or higher up the pyramid. And I know that some of the, the primary breeding companies are using systems like that already. Yeah, I mean, Barry, I mean, I, I, I'm hugely excited about the opportunity to enhance welfare and monitor welfare and objectively measure it using technology and some of the advances that have been made in the last few years in terms of cameras and artificial intelligence and stuff. For me, it actually doesn't doesn't just measure welfare. And, and um, if you think of a stockman going in, yeah, when he's going in, a good stockman will measure the welfare of the birds every time he's in that shed, but he's not in the shed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the opportunity to train some of this technology to be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week and truly understand bird behaviour in relation to welfare issues really is fascinating and, uh, as I say, genuinely exciting. And um, we've covered quite a lot in the last few minutes. We've actually gone from the, the origins of, of welfare and the Bramble Report, that takes me back. Not that I was in the industry in 1965, I hasten to <laughs> add, but I wasn't too far away from that. But but yeah, it takes me back in recollection, the five freedoms and everything that that's been built on over the last few years, a good starting point for this discussion. And then how we measure welfare and measure it through different systems now. And and you mentioned you know the, the array of different systems and welfare offerings uh, that are out there just now in livestock production. And um, it's important we don't reinvent the wheel. You know, they, they yes. all have certain pros and cons and there are merits to these different systems. And, and we shouldn't just reinvent the wheel. You know, one of the things that is fascinating is uh, in my career, having seen birds come inside from the range purely to, to, help, uh, to help manage their welfare in many respects and, and the disease challenges. And now we, we're busy putting them back out there again. Um, and having, I hope, not to reinvent and relearn these mistakes that were made uh, many decades ago. But the other thing, as I say, really is the technology, how how we can measure objectively welfare and how we can use technology in the modern day to support um, companies to, to treat their birds in a really positive way when it comes to welfare. So it's been great speaking to you again, Barry, a really good discussion. Um, and thanks for joining Nick and I on uh, on the show today. Pleasure as always, and it's it's been a joy interacting again. Yeah, thanks, Barry. I mean, it's it's great talking to you, and I hope that uh, we'll have you as a guest uh, on one of our future seasons. And uh, like for those who just joined us on Accelerate, here we talk about agriculture and animals and uh, problems and issues and topics, and we also talk to specialists from the industry like Barry. So don't miss our episodes and uh, follow us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, on Instagram and on Twitter. And don't forget to check our website. And once again, Barry, thank you for joining us and um, see you soon. Thanks, Barry. See you next time, Nick. Yeah. (laughs) Cheers. Thank you.